Hi everybody, welcome back to you Tips For You. It's cold and flu season and that's what I want to talk to you about today. There's a lot of renewed interest every year at this time about overuse of antibiotics. Uh, there's a great awareness going on about overprescribing and overtaking antibiotics and the harm that it's doing to us as human beings. So I wanted to bring that to your awareness and make sure you realize that antibiotics do not treat regular viral infections. So the common cold that we all get, and I just got over one, and the flu, and a lot of upper respiratory illnesses and things like that come from viruses. Antibiotics will not work on a virus. They will only kill bacteria. And that's a good thing. Uh, antibiotics save lives, but you have to be sure you really need them. And so you need good communication with your doctor. If you go there because you're not feeling well and the doctor doesn't think you have a bacterial infection, uh, don't push for the antibiotics. You can always wait a day or two and see how things progress before you decide to take medication. And when you do take antibiotics, always finish the prescribed dosage and never share it with anyone else. Because what happens is if you don't finish it, sometimes you leave behind a couple of those little bugs and they grow into superbugs and that's what's going on right now. We are having a lot of antibiotic resistant bacteria that are growing. These superbugs are bacteria that have become resistant to our usual protocol of antibiotics. Now living in your intestines we have about three to four pounds of friendly bacteria known as beneficial bacteria and yeast. Soon as you swallow antibiotics, not only are you killing off the bad bacteria that's making you ill, but you're also killing off the beneficial bacteria. And what you're also doing is allowing the yeast now to multiply and grow stronger because the yeast will feed on that when they don't have the beneficial bacteria to keep them in check. So imagine that you're taking antibiotics for no reason and that you didn't need them. Now what you're doing is you're just killing off your beneficial bacteria, you're allowing the yeast to grow, and this can surface in your body in many different kinds of ways. If you get yeast infections and skin infections and things like that, um, a lot of it is caused by overgrowth of yeast. So you want to keep that in check by trying to consume as much yogurt, acidophilus, kefir, and probiotics that you can because that will help keep the beneficial bacteria in your intestines at their optimal level. And if you're taking antibiotics, it's also a good idea to also take acidophilus, bifidus, other probiotics that will help build up your beneficial bacteria while you're taking the antibiotics. Don't take them together. You want to take them in between. So when you take your antibiotics, then you wait a while, and then before your next, like in between the hours in which you have to take your another antibiotics, then you take your, um, your acidophilus or your probiotic, because uh, you don't want to mix the two. But like I said, the best thing to do is first determine whether or not you need them. The best thing for colds is rest and fluids. If you're sick, there's probably a good reason. You were probably run down, perhaps you weren't eating very well, not getting enough sleep, not exercising, whatever. And before you know it, you catch a bug. Now I know I was running around like crazy for the holidays and planning everything, and then boom, I got a pretty bad cold. But nothing that rest, fluids, and some of these other things I'm going to talk to you about that I do that are natural that will help you get over a cold. And I like to take the natural approach first, always, always, before I think of even going to a doctor. There's so much you can do. I especially, I use the steam. Um, I'll make a pot. I have a video on steam inhalation, so please, I'll put the link below in the description box. Please consider trying this because it's really helpful when you're stuffed up and your lungs hurt, you're coughing. It was my savior. I boil a big pot of water and in it I place three tea bags. Ginkgo biloba leaf, chamomile tea leaf, and eucalyptus leaf. Three tea bags and I let it steep in there. Then I 
sit down at the table, I put a towel over my head and I lean over the pot, be careful it's very hot at first, and I let the steam go inside my, my mouth and my nose and it helps so much. And I do that, I'll do that three times a day when I first get ill and it helps me so much. I also will use a lot of garlic. I'll make tea and I'll put my crushed garlic in that. I use elderberry extract which is wonderful when you're not feeling well. As soon as you don't feel well, take elderberry extract. They sell it at vitacost.com, the one that I use. I will put that also in the link as well as a link to the coupon that you can use on vitacost.com so you can save $10. But this is a great natural immune booster. It's an antiviral, antimicrobial, and it's a more natural approach to trying to get well. And then rest, lots of fluids. Uh, these are things that you can do to get better on your own without the help of any type of medication. And moms out there, for your little ones. Uh, sometimes children get a lot of ear infections. Ask your pediatrician about their new guidelines on treating children with ear infections with antibiotics because there is new studies now that are showing that antibiotics really only helps maybe one in five or six children when they have an ear infection and that the protocol now is just to use pain relievers and see how that goes. Uh, and there's new criteria about how to look at the eardrum to determine whether the child needs antibiotics or not. I'll leave that to you and your doctor, but do ask the questions, ask them what they think, uh, whether they think, you know, this is something that you should use for, for your child or if it's something that will go away on its own. Um, it used to be that as soon as your child had any redness or anything in the ear, they gave antibiotics, but they're changing their way of thinking on that, and there are new guidelines. Um, so you want to just discuss that with your pediatrician, because I think anywhere that we can uh, avoid taking antibiotics, the better we are for our own bodies, because the more you take them, the more your body is going to be resistant to bacteria. And then, when you really do have something, and you need to take antibiotics, you're going to have a hard time finding one that's strong enough to combat the type of bacteria that you have in you to get rid of it. And that's what's going on all across the country. These superbugs, these super resistant bacteria, they're resistant to the medications that we have to treat, and people are dying from it. Um, you know, it's it's a scary thing. It's making the medical community really examine and take responsibility for prescribing antibiotics. So when you think about yourself, you know, also think of the greater community because we all contribute to the antibiotic resistance but just for the community just by what we're doing with ourselves. And then, the, you know, they're using antibiotics as well in livestock. So it's getting you know into the meats and into the milks and things like that. There's it, there's a lot of use of it that makes it possible for these bugs to become resistant and therefore need stronger and stronger medication. So I hope I brought your awareness onto uh, this um, that you should really be as frugal as possible when it comes to taking medication uh, to treat yourself. Sometimes we run to the doctor because we're afraid it's going to get worse. So we figure, let's go right away because it's only going to get worse and then I'll have a full-blown infection. If you're somebody who gets chronic sinusitis or anything that you chronically treat with antibiotics, try to examine what's going on in your life. Try to look for a healthier alternative. For sinusitis sufferers, one of the best things you can do is to irrigate with salt water. And I have a video on that and it's wonderful. And I did that for myself as well when I was sick with my cold and it just helps to flush out all the mucus that collects in your sinuses. Um, you get rid of it, you can breathe better. Also, the salt acts like a little bacteria prevention um, in, your, in your nasal passages. It's a great alternative to medication. So do what you can to try to help yourself get over your colds. And then, you know, practice good hand washing. Um, be careful if you're near someone who's coughing or sneezing. Those are the easiest ways to get sick because droplets, they fly through the air, you inhale them in, into your respiratory tract or you get them on your hands and you rub them into your eyes. Try not to touch your eyes all the time. 
Keep your hands off your eyes and away from your mouth and don't touch your nose. These are all areas where germs get into our bodies. You can prevent some illnesses and take care of yourself. Exercise, eat right, don't smoke, don't drink excessively, get sleep, um, take it easy and you'll stay healthier and you can fight things when you get them and they just won't wipe you out so badly. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, take care of yourself. We'll get through it. We always do. It's a tough time of the year. And now that the holidays are past, we're not all like crowded in malls and everything. So I think that's a really big place for people to get sick. Make it your New Year's resolution to have a healthier life and take better care of yourself. And please subscribe because I have a lot more to come something of interest to everyone and please visit me at my blog spot and I'm also on Facebook and Twitter so please visit me there as well and I will see you soon okay so you have a wonderful healthy winter bye bye now